Hello, my name is Philip Bame. Imagine Berlin in November of 1938. Jewish shops have been ransacked, synagogues set on fire, and thousands of Jews are being rounded up and sent to concentration camps. Despite his Aryan looks, the Jewish businessman Otto Zilbermann is afraid of becoming one of them. Perhaps the most remarkable thing about this novel, entitled The Passenger, is that it was written at the time, at breakneck speed in the weeks following the Kristallnacht atrocities by a young writer named Ulrich Alexander Boschwitz. Although he managed to get out of Germany in 1935 and eventually moved to England, when the war broke out, he was deported to Australia as an enemy alien, despite being a Jewish refugee. In 1942, he was allowed to return to England, but his ship was torpedoed by a German submarine and he perished at sea. Long considered lost, the original manuscript was recently rediscovered in a German archive. It is now coming out in English, in my translation, published by Metropolitan Books in the United States and Pushkin Press in the UK. Here are a few pages from the first chapter. The protagonist Otto Zilbermann has just seen his business partner off at the train station and is about to return to his apartment. The waiter Zilbermann had been looking for earlier without success finally appeared. Are guests meant to wait for service here or for the trains? Asked Zilbermann, his sharp tone expressing his disdain for anything that approached slovenliness or exuded an unfriendly air. I beg your pardon, answered the waiter. A gentleman in second class was complaining because he thought he was sitting across from a Jew, but it wasn't a Jew at all. The man was from South America. And, and since I know a little Spanish, I was called in to help. I see. Silverman got up, his mouth contracted into a line and his gray eyes fixed the waiter with a severe look. The waiter tried to smooth things over. It really wasn't a Jew, he assured Zilberman. Evidently, the waiter considered his guest to be a particularly staunch member of the party. I'm not interested in that. The best would be, the waiter went on, if the Jews had to wear yellow bands on their arms, then at least there wouldn't be any confusion. Zilberman looked at him. Are they really so terrible? He asked quietly, regretting his words even as he spoke them. The waiter looked at Silberman as though he hadn't understood him right. He was clearly surprised, but also unsuspecting since Silberman had none of the features that marked him as a Jew according to the tenets of the racial scientists. The whole thing has nothing to do with me, the man said at last. Still, it would be good for the others. My brother-in-law, for example, looks a little Jewish, but of course he's an Aryan. It's only that he has to constantly explain and prove everything over and over. That's too much to ask of anyone. Yes, it is, Superman agreed. Then he paid his tab and left. Unbelievable, he thought, absolutely unbelievable. After leaving the train station, he climbed into a taxi and headed home. The streets were full of people, many in uniform. Newsboys were hawking their papers, and Zilberman had the impression they were doing a brisk business. For a moment, he considered buying one for himself, but then decided against it, since he figured the news was bound to be bad and almost certainly hostile, at least as far as he was concerned. He would undoubtedly be experiencing it all firsthand soon enough. After a short ride, the taxi pulled up in front of his building. Frau Friedrichs, the wife of the concierge, was lingering in the stairwell. She greeted him politely, and Zuberman was somehow glad to see that her behavior remained unchanged. As he stepped onto the red plush runner and climbed the stairs, he once again had the sensation that his life was only half real. Recently, such ruminations had become a habit. I'm living as though I weren't a Jew, he thought, somewhat incredulously. For the time being, I'm simply a well-to-do citizen. Under threat, it's true, but as of yet unscathed. How is this possible? I live in a modern six-room apartment. 
people talk to me and treat me as though I were one of them. They act as if I'm the same person I used to be, the liars. It's enough to give a man a guilty conscience. Whereas I'd like to show them a clearer picture of reality, namely, that as of yesterday I'm something different because I am a Jew. And who did I used to be? No, who am I? What am I really? A swear word on two legs, one that people mistake for something else. I no longer have any rights, and it's only out of propriety or habit that so many act as though I did. My entire existence is based solely on the faulty memory of people who essentially wish to destroy it. They just happen to have forgotten about me. I've been officially degraded, but the public debasement has yet to take place. Thank you for listening.